All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for our latest installment of Solutions for Success. Today's topic, uh, Power BI, uh, a very interesting topic to many of our clients, uh, as many of people are doing Power BI work already or doing proof of concepts or figuring out how it can plug into their environment or how they can leverage it. We're lucky enough today to be joined by Jan Crow, our Director of Consulting Services, who's going to share some of the latest advances in the platform, some tips and tricks. Uh, she's recently attended the Power Platform Conference in Las Vegas. And even though the saying goes, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, Jan will regale us with some information that she's brought back from that conference. So Jan's information is up on the screen for you to see if you'd like to connect with her. Again, I'm Jonathan Hamilton, the president of Point Alliance, and there's my information. We will be sharing this deck with everyone uh, after the session and uh, my colleague Philip uh, will be following up with people to share the video and see if you've got any questions. So if you do have any questions while the presentation is going on, please do use the chat and we'll be, mon we'll be monitoring that. Uh, a few things before we get started. Uh, for those who are not aware, Point Alliance uh, is a Microsoft Solutions partner. Uh, with security and modern work designations. Uh, we have over 11 competencies in the uh, old legacy system, partner system with Microsoft. Our team is 100% certified and we're very proud of that. And you can find more information about us at our website at pointalliance.com. So I think without further ado, I will turn it over to Jan and she can share her screen and the presentation and we can get started. All right. Um, <clears throat> hopefully everybody can see my screen. Morning, everyone. So today we're going to review just some key areas and not all the areas of Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Um, primarily, it's foundation one like um, some copilot co usage scenarios, a new direct like query option, um, Power BI right back, and how to obtain new visuals in Power BI. So let's briefly take a look at some of the components of Fabric. Um, some of you may or may not have heard of Fabric. Microsoft has bundled a number of key components that used to be separate um, into an umbrella called Fabric, and it's licensed as Fabric. Um, so there's Power BI, which uh, is probably the most familiar to anybody who's used Power BI and the Fabric platform. And it allows you to create visualizations on sources of data from a variety of sources from SQL, data warehouses, websites, uh, Excel files, et cetera. Um, data factories provide data integration to ingest, prepare, and transform your data. Um, for anybody who's familiar with SQL Server integration services, this is Fabric's version of that. Um, with slightly different features and slightly different implementations, and it's all done in a browser. Um, there's a new feature called Data Activator, which is a no-code experience in Fabric that allows you to specify actions such as email notifications and Power Automate workflows to essentially launch when Data Activator detects specific patterns in your data or conditions in your changing data. Um, there's also now real-time intelligence available through Fabric. Um, it's essentially an end-to-end -end solution for event-driven scenarios, streaming data, and data logs. It allows you to extract some insights, visualizations, and action on that data in, that's in motion by handling data ingestion, transformation, storage of that data, and any analytics or visualization. Also including tracking and AI for any real-time actions. Um, there's data science, which enables you to build, deploy, and operationalize machine learning models from Fabric. 
it integrates with Azure Machine Learning, which is um, a different component under Azure. And Azure Machine Learning provides built-in experiment tracking and model registry. Data Warehouse is a Synapse Data Warehouse, provi which provides industry-leading SQL performance on scale. Um, it is not Azure SQL or SQL Server. Um, it is data that's actually stored in Delta Lake format or Delta Parquet format. Um, depending on who you're speaking to, it's all the same thing. So let's talk about uh, the foundation of Fabric, which is one lake. One lake is a single unified and logical data lake for your whole organization. Like OneDrive, one lake comes automatically with every Microsoft Fabric tenant and is designed to be the single place for all your analytics data. One lake is built on ADLS storage or Azure Data Lake storage, um, or uh, in other words, Azure Data Lake Generation 2, which is ADLG2. Um, Microsoft certainly likes their anachronisms. Um, One Lake simplifies fabric experiences by eliminating the need for you to understand infrastructure concepts such as resource groups, role-based access control or RBAC, Azure Resource Manager, and redundancies or regions. So that comes in really handy. It makes it your your licensing at a capacity versus having to set up all these individual components within Azure. So you actually don't need an Azure account to use Fabric. All the compute engines store their data automatically in one lake, um, whether the files or, uh, or um, database tables or shortcuts or folders, um, they're all stored in Delta, Delta Parquet format, um, which is an open standard um, and is, is essentially a storage format for all tabular data. If a data, so let's um, talk about lake house. If a data engineer loads data into a lake house using Apache Spark and then a SQL developer uses Transact SQL or T-SQL to load data in their fully transactional data warehouse, both are contributing to the same data lake. As you can see, we've got one lake, workspaces, your lake house, files and tables, files, folder shortcuts, as I was mentioning. So there are separate containers for tables and files, and files could be things like CSV or Excel spreadsheets, shortcuts or shortcuts to files stored elsewhere. Um, tables, of course, are structured data um, of rows and columns, and files could be structured or unstructured. For example, they could be Word documents as well, but most of the time it's CSVs in Excel. So with Fabric, the different analytical engines, T-SQL, Apache Spark, Analysis Services, all store their data in the open Delta Parquet format to allow you to use the same data across multiple engines. There is no longer need to copy data just to use it with another engine. You're always able to choose the best engine for the job that you are trying to do. And part of that is being able to reference a file that's linked through a shortcut. So you're not having multiple copies of files um, sitting around and not knowing which one's the most current. It's a similar problem you would have sharing files through email. Um, so for example, imagine you have a team of SQL engineers building a fully transactional data warehouse. They can use the Transact SQL engine or the T-SQL engine and all the power of T-SQL to create tables, transform that data and load data to those tables is available. Now, if a data scientist wants to make use of this data, they no longer need to go through a special Spark SQL driver um, 
One Lake stores all the data in Delta Pair K format, as I said, and data scientists can then use the full power of the Spark Engine and its open source libraries directly over that data. And business users can build Power BI reports directly on top of One Lake using the new Direct Lake mode, and we'll talk more about that um, a little later. So the Analysis Services Engine is what powers Power BI semantic models. And it's not what it's not the same analysis services that we're traditionally used to on on premise. This is part of Fabric, and it has always it's offered two modes of accessing data, the data import and direct query. Now we have direct lake mode, which we'll talk about as I said later on. Um, but essentially, it gives users all the speed of import without needing to copy the data, combining the best of import and direct query. Let's talk about Copilot and Fabric. Copilot is, you probably hear it a lot if uh, you have your ear to the crown. Um, Copilot is Microsoft's version uh, uh, or expanded on their AI tools and the concept of chat GPT, if anybody's heard of that. So Copilot and Power BI brings advanced generative AI experiences for Power BI report creation and consumption experiences. And essentially, Copilot can assist users to create new report pages by providing suggestions on how to analyze their data. It can also automatically create format and layout visuals based on the natural language requests. Users can also chat with Copilot in order to update and revi refine their report designs and to learn about the data presented in the visuals. Report creators in Power BI can use the new narrative Copilot visual to essentially generate AI summaries of their data within the reports. Copilot also provides suggested prompts that are used to summarize and find insights in the data, optionally the report formatting of generated summaries. All insights generated by Copilot include citations that describe the sourced report data. And Copilot summaries automatically regenerate when the filters change in a Power BI report and they enforce any Power BI data security like real level security. Additionally, DAX query authors within Power BI can use Copilot for DAX query generation to write, edit, or explain DAX queries on their model data. Ask what data you want to see returned, and Copilot will give you the DAX query. Copilot can also be used to add a column or formatting to an additional DAX query, even finding the column in your data. Finally, Copilot can also explain what a DAX query is doing or telling you more about the specific DAX function. This can be a huge productivity boost for those using DAX queries. I'm going to get into a few example scenarios in a minute, but let's talk about Copilot licensing. So I mentioned earlier that, uh, that Fabric's licensed at a capacity level. There's levels varying from F2 all the way up well past F64. Currently, F64 capacity is required. It is an expensive capacity. But Microsoft has recently announced that they're going to make it more accessible and cost effective. So they've announced a 50% price reduction for Copilot in, in Fabric, essentially effective November 1st. Although Copilot's still being rolled out, not everybody has access to it or is able to enable it. But it has to be specifically enabled with an F64 capacity. So let's look at the first example. Like even if you don't have edit permissions for a report with Copilot, you can actually generate a summary of a report page in the Copilot plane pane. You have the flexibility to refine or guide the summary by customizing prompts such as summarize this page using bullet points or provide a summary of sales on this page. You can also ask specific questions about the visualized data 
on the report and receive tailor a tailored response. This response includes references to specific visuals, aiding you in understanding the specific sources contributing to each part of the answer or a summary within the report. And the next example is Copilot. I mentioned earlier that you can use Copilot to actually create a new report. So it can get you started on a new report by suggesting topics based on your data. Um, so it analyzes all the queries that are in, in essentially referenced in your data pane and in your semantic model, which includes all the relationships between that data. And when you select this option directly in chat, Copilot evaluates the data and provides a report outline with suggested pages that you can explore and choose to create for you. Um, a report outline of suggested pages for your report, for example, of what each page in the report is about and how many pages it creates, the and also the visuals on each individual page, which can come in handy. Um, it's not perfect, um, but it can get you started. So one more example is creating a summary visual on the report itself. So in Power BI Desktop and in Power BI Service, you can create a Copilot. You can use Copilot for a new Power BI report to quickly create a narrative on the report with just a few clicks. Um, and it can summarize the entire report, some specific pages, or even just specific visuals. Now, there is a narrative available in Power BI that isn't driven by Copilot, that uh, is a little less detailed, but still effective. Um, there are some considerations and limitations on Copilot. Um, as I said, you have to have an F64 capacity and you need to update your data model to be able to work well with Copilot. Um, Copilot can't modify visuals after it's generated them and they can't add filters yet. Um, and they don't make layout changes after you've created it. But to get you started, it's a handy tool. So let's talk about Direct Lake. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Um, Direct Lake is a new query option from Microsoft. So most people would be more familiar with import or direct query. Um, people using import um, use it for SQL and Excel data. Uh, I primarily use it for Excel data or SQL data that doesn't need to be refreshed very frequently. Um, SQL data is generally direct query so that it's live. Um, so it, it it's not wait, using a cached version. So if you've got data that changes fairly frequently, direct query is an option. Um, import does have some limitations because it does increase the size of the Power BI file. So just like Excel has limitations on 2 million rows, Power BI can have some issues when the data sets on import are too large. Um, so direct query becomes a better option. Now direct lake is a new query option. Its primary use case for direct lake storage mode is typically for IT driven analytics projects that essentially leverage lake centric architectures. In this scenario, you have or expect to accumulate large volumes of data in one lake. The fast loading of the data into memory and frequent and fast refresh options and, and efficient use of capacity resources make for fast query performance and all um, are important to this specific use case. So Microsoft does recommend you consider this option as a quick way to reap the benefits of Fabric without the necessary and immediate redesigning of your entire data warehouse or your analytics system. However, it does depend on data preparation being done in the data lake and data preparation can be done by using various tools such as Spark Jobs for Fabric Lakehouse, 
T-SQL DML statements for fabric warehouses, data flows, pipelines, and, and other um, fabric tools. And this approach then ensures your data preparation logic is performed as low as possible in the architecture to maximize reusability. However, if the semantic model offer, offer doesn't have the ability to modify the source item, for example, in this case, a self-service analyst who might not have write permissions on a lake house that is managed by IT, then import storage mode might be the better choice. That's because it supports data preparation by using Power Query, which is defined as part of the semantic model. So there's just a couple of different mode scenarios. So import mode is local data, high performance, high latency, because it's cached. Direct query is remote data, like sitting in Azure SQL or SQL Server or Oracle. Um, it can be low performing, um, depending on the query performance and, and how much performance tuning was done on that remote source. And it does have a low latency. You can actually do a mixed mode where you can um, have direct query and import. So you do cache stuff that goes in and does some direct query, but that's a little bit more advanced setup. And then the direct like is when you're using the entire Fabric platform and it has low latency and high performance. Just a little bit of an example of how that, that works, where you've got your report, your semantic model, which is just the definition of your data model within the Power BI report. Um, it will fall back to direct query for tables and views, um, and then queries delta tables directly, and then back up to the semantic model for parquet files. So this feature, Power Right Back, is one of the most inter interesting features I've run across in Power BI. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever had uh, an experience where they've got a visualization, they wouldn't mind some feedback, like getting some information back from a user or have a scenario in which we need to further categorize a dimension table and we don't have that ability in the source backend. Um, right back is actually a really handy feature. Um, so it, it essentially allows users to update data in real time. Um, with right back enabled, they can input new data or modify existing data directly in Power BI reports, but you control that. So you have to control that through a Canvas app within Power Apps. So it's not just allowing any user, you know, the ability to change any data element. Um, it's to control what you want information to be updated as without um, breaking the underlying foundation of your source information. Um, so to implement this, first you need to create Power Apps Canvas app, as I mentioned. And then once you've created that, you can implement the Canvas app via the Power Apps Native Visual and Power BI, which is down here. And Power Automate then provides the background automation for bulk processing and refreshing. So the core components to incorporate this ability to pass pre-filtered data from Power BI to into a Power Apps and Power Automate. Um, to funnel any updates in a supporting backend. It's important to refresh the Power BI data set or data flow to ensure updates are visible to all users. And essentially, this feature does require a Power Apps premium license, but very handy tool. And here's a couple of screenshots of how it might work. So you've got a table, a couple of charts, and then you've got a little Canvas app form because you want to actually um, define what the genre is and what the review rating is for that specific item because you may not be storing that in the back end. Or you can do multiple updates and do a save and continue and then a submit all for a bulk update. 
And then one final thing we'll have a brief chat about is Power BI Desktop has a lot of visuals um, that are built in. But there might be something that you would like to have that is not available out of the box in Power BI. And as you can see, all these visuals, and they're all configurable to certain things where you can actually define specific colors and columns and bar charts um, for specific dimensions, and you can add titles and all that stuff. So pretty, pretty standard stuff. But you can also add more visuals um, from the App Store, or you can create your own. So essentially, Microsoft has a an app source. So if you do the triple dot, you can get more visuals and it takes you to the app source store. And some of these are licensed and some of them are free and some of them are from Microsoft and some of them are from third party vendors. Um, so it's essentially a marketplace. Um, and you can download those new visuals into your Power BI desktop. And there's quite a few um, this is just a sample of some of them. You can search for things. I happen to be searching for things that said Microsoft. Um, so things like, you know, a sand key chart that's not out of the box or radar chart are, are actually available for Microsoft to include in your Power BI report. And once you've downloaded the custom visual, um, you can then import them into Power BI Desktop, or it'll just add it. If you're doing it from Power BI Desktop directly, it'll just add it to your Power BI Desktop. And it'll show below the triple dot in the visualizations pane. And as I mentioned, you can create your own visuals. Um, and you can actually publish them to the app source store. Um, essentially, to create a custom visual for Power BI, you will need to use Power BI developer tools and an SDK. And it will require a developer level skill. And I've also included a couple of links here of Fabric Capacity License. Um, information as well as the release plan for features because they are constantly releasing new features into Power BI and the Fabric platform. So thank you very much. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right. Thank you so much, Jan. I think that was uh, some great information. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, Power BI is a, a very hot topic right now. Certainly fabric is something that I know a lot of our clients are looking at, that they're trying to, again, understand how Power BI fits in and, and with some of the traditional tools that are bundled into fabric. I know licensing in itself is a whole other topic that we could do a webinar on. So maybe we'll do that later. But from a uh, technical perspective, that was great. Uh, certainly the integration of Copilot from Microsoft into all of their products um, is a priority for them. Uh, and I know that's getting integrated into Power BI as, as you were demoing. So thank you so much for that. We've got a slide up right now for our next solutions for success sessions. Uh, we've got one coming up at the end of the month on information security awareness training. Uh, that's an added one in for October as part of security awareness month. And then into November, uh, we will have our next one on November 19th. So make sure that you register for those. Thank you so much, everyone for joining. If you'd like to leave a review, a QR code on the screen now. And as I mentioned, you will be getting a link to the recording and the presentation from my colleague, Philip, in the next day or two. So thank you so much. Have a great day. And thank you so much, Jan, for uh, sharing all your insight. Have a great day, everybody.